Hi, this is Brandon from Watches on You. Today we're at JB Hudson Jewelers in Minneapolis, Minnesota, taking a look at the Tog Heuer Heuer Heritage Caliber 17. So first, I'd like to remind you that I'll be leaving links in the description to JB Hudson's website, to this watch on Tog Heuer's website, um, as well as to our channel store where we've listed our favorite watches and watch accessories. Um, we'd highly encourage you to make purchases on the store as it does support the channel um, so we can keep bringing you great content. So now let's move on to this watch. So as I said, um, this is the Tog Heuer Heuer Heritage Monza Caliber 17. So this watch is meant to harken back to the original Heuer Monza, which was released in 1976 to com commemorate Ferrari's Formula One season in 1975 with Clay Regazzoni and Niki Lauda. So if you've seen the movie Rush, um, both of those uh, drivers were very important in that. So that's what we're talking about. So. Now I'll move on to the, the, kind of this watch's case, and this watch has a completely titanium case, but it has a titanium carbide coating, which is, gives it this kind of black finish. And I really do like the look of this. I know I'm not a big uh, black watch guy, as you've probably heard in many of my previous videos, but I really like how that looks. And also it gives it kind of a light, um, the titanium at least, gives it a light feel, and it, I mean, it's just a very cool, sporty, yet kind of vintage watch, and I think that looks very nice. But uh, one thing to note, the pushers are made out of stainless steel, so that's something to keep in mind. I don't really know what effects that would have, but um, just so you guys know, it is not titanium. So um, now I'll demonstrate the chronograph function. So it does have Tog Heuer's caliber 17 movement, which is, of course, a chronograph movement. And the the power reserve on this movement is probably my least favorite feature about it. It's only 42 hours. I wish they moved it up to 48. Uh, 48 is kind of my limit, but... Um, if you have this watch, you probably have a watch winder, so that might not be that big of a deal for you. Um, but I think that uh, 48 hours would have been a good benchmark to fit. Um, but as I said, so I demonstrated the chronograph, I started it with the top pusher here, and I'll stop it again with the top pusher and reset using the bottom pusher. It is not a flyback chronograph, so that's something to keep in mind. But I love the red accents on the dial and actually the white accents as well as the um, faux aged loom. I'm not a big uh, artificially aged loom guy, but I think it looks great on this with the red and the white. I just love those colors. Also, I think it's cool how this watch actually has a pulsometer as well as a tachymeter. So the pulsometer is in red here. So all the numbers above that are for the pulsometer and the tachymeter are the white ones. Um, I think that that's a really cool feature to have. I don't know what utility you'd get for that, but I mean, in racing, obviously a tachymeter can be useful. So um, now I'll move on to the case back of this watch. It is a numbered edition, so you can see down here it says number uh, 2920, and it, the case back is relatively minimalistic. It does not have a clear case back, and I like that. I mean, I think it's... Uh, only the best movements should be shown off, and if Tog Heuer, it, not that this movement isn't finished well, they actually are finished quite well. I just like how, um, I mean, obviously the original version of this watch did not have a clear case back, so they didn't do it on this one, and I, I think that's cool. So, um, now I'll talk about the clasp. It's kind of got the traditional Tog Heuer style clasp, but it does say Heuer, it does not say Tog Heuer, um, so that's something to keep in mind. It's got a nice leather racing strap, I'll try it on for a wrist shot now. Now the diameter of this watch is 42 millimeters and it wears pretty much exactly like you'd expect. It doesn't wear really any bigger or smaller than that. Um, and it would look good on most people's wrist. I have about a 6.5 inch wrist in circumference just for comparison purposes. And I think it looks totally fine. So unless you have a really small wrist, it might look a little big, but other than that, you'll be totally fine. So if you like this video, please remember to subscribe and share. And also, if you do subscribe, definitely hit the bell on the side of the subscription button. Otherwise, you won't hear about all the great content that we have as we release it. So if you like this video, please remember to subscribe and share. And again, um, thanks for watching.